Hi. So in this video, I want to talk about the python.env library, which can be really, really useful. As usual, the documentation for this video is in the repo, which is linked below. So as an aside, for those using pipenv, if you use pipenv, pipenv already supports using a .env file to automatically load environment variables defined in that file. So if you're using pipenv for your local virtual environment, then this library may not be as useful since pipenv already essentially does the same thing. So for this demo, I'm not going to use pipenv. I'm going to use Python's built-in virtual environments. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the environment, activate it, and install it. So I have the installation in the requirements.txt file. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing we're going to do is to install a Python 3.10 virtual environment. So I'm going to do Python 3.10, and then I'm going to call the vnv module, and I'm going to create a .vnv virtual environment. So this will create my virtual environment. Of course, you're in Win if you're in Windows, you'll probably have you know, slightly different ways of doing this. So now I need to activate that. So source will go to vnv.bin slash activate. So now we've activated the virtual environment. As you can see, it's active. And then finally, I'm going to pip install minus r the, you know, from the requirements file. So that's going to install env. By the way, if you want to see if something has been installed in your environment, you can do pip freeze and that will give you the list of everything that's been installed. Now you may have a lot of them, in which case you might be looking for a specific one. You can pipe this over to grep. And if you're on Windows, unfortunately, I don't think this will work unless you're using the WSL. So we want to grep what? Well, in this case, I might want to just grep.env, for example. And you can see that it finds it. So we know that it's been installed successfully. Okay, so that's the first thing. Now, the next thing we're going to do is take a look at what is this dot env? What does it do? Well, we often use environment variables, right? When our Python applications are deployed to production systems to configure a variety of settings used by our app. Typically, there's various mechanisms that are used in CI/CD pipelines to populate these environment variables. But when we're running the system locally, we also need those environment variables declared. And having to do it manually every time is going to be a pain. So instead, the easiest way is to create a .env file in our project root, and I have one right here. And we define our environment variables in there, potentially including secrets as well, okay? Now, this is a problem because we definitely do not want to check you know, secret values into the GitHub repo, into the Git repo. So the way that I avoid doing that is I create another file called env template. And this one has all the settings that are needed, you know, populated except the secrets. And then what I do is that I specifically put the .env in the git ignore file and I include the env template so that somebody else who gets this repository can look at the env template and create their own local.env file and they can put in their secret values. And there's no risk then of including the .env file with the secrets into the repo when you push that up to the main repository. So that's the way, that's the approach that I take. So my template file basically doesn't have the secrets, but then my .env file, which is an ignored file from the Git perspective, has the secrets. And then I have this file constantly. I do not have to recreate all my environment variables. But how do they get loaded up? Well, this is where the python.env becomes valuable because we can basically load up this function. We can import load.env and we just call load.env. This is going to read the environment file, the .env file, and then it's then going to inject it into our environment variables. So now we can get the environment variables just like we normally do when we have normal environment variables defined. And then in production, you wouldn't have a .env file and this wouldn't load anything therefore. So 
One thing to take a look at is that we now have several ways of defining environment variables. We can define them in this .env file. We can also define them as regular environment variables in our terminal session. We can just do an export and then the name of the environment variable equal to the value. Or we can also specify them as command line arguments when we run our script. So what happens when we mix these different ways of defining the environment variables? Well, the command line version overrides any pre-existing standard environment variable. So if you've got an environment variable that's defined in your session, but then you also specify it this way, for example, when you run the script, you can do it this way, this will override any value in the session. On the other hand, if you have something in the .env file, it will not override anything. So the way that the system works is that it will basically, you know, the priority order in which the environment variables are picked up, it will look at the command line arguments first. If the environment variable is present there, that's what it takes. If it's not, it then looks at the session environment variables. If it's in there, it picks it up and uses that. And if it's not, then and only then will the .env, that load.env, pick up the value from the .env file. So let's take a look at this quickly. Let's take a look at our env file. So I have this um, Star Wars API base URL defined. Then I have this films over here, and I'll explain what this is in a minute. And then I have two secret values. So those are defined in my .env file. Now, if I go ahead and look at the main.py, you can see that it doesn't do much. It imports the OS module, it imports this load.env, and then it actually calls load.env. And then everything else is kind of standard. I just use the OS get env, or you could you know, specify default values, or you could use a dictionary lookup using the square brackets so that you actually get an exception if the environment variable is not defined. Up to you how you want to do it. So that's all this does, right? If you look at this, this is just the normal way of getting environment variables in Python. So let's go ahead and just run this. So I'm gonna to go to my command line and I'm just going to run main.py. And you can see that it picked up the values from the .env file, right? I can take a look and make sure that those are not actually defined in my session. So for Doing that, I can take env, so this will give me all my environment variables. And of course, I don't want everything. I just want to grab, for example, uh, the um, API. So let's say API, or I want to go and grab anything called secret. So if I take a look at this, you can see I have nothing defined in my session variables, right? In my session environment variables. So all these values were picked up from the .env file. Now, when we push, let's say, to production, there might be a different way in which we're pushing these environment variables. It's probably not going to be this .env file because we're gonna to have to pick up secrets from someplace, potentially, and then put them into the environment variables if that's the approach we're taking. So let's go ahead and create a session environment variable. So in this current terminal session that I'm in, I'm going to export and I'm gonna say secret one, if I can type, equal to A, B, C, D, E, F, G, okay? So now if I go back and do my grep, you can see that A, B, C, D, E, F, G is defined in my session. So now if I run python main.py, look at what happens. Our secret one is now A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So this session value for secret one basically was not overridden by the .env file. Now, furthermore, I can also override a or, or define an environment variable when I run the Python script. So to do that, I can just say secret one equals, let's say, T U V W X Y Z, and then Python main.py. And look at what happens. Now, in this case, you can see that the command line value for the environment variable basically overrode everything else. And so that's basically the way .env works. You basically define all your environment variables that you need in this .env file, 
But then when it comes to, let's say, running things in production on different systems, or if you want to override even locally on a temporary basis, you can set things up in your either your session environment variables, or you can set them using the command line arguments. And then when you have something that doesn't have the .env file, so if I remove this .env file, so let's actually go ahead and redefine this name here. So I'm gonna refactor and just rename. And I don't want to do the refactor, otherwise it's the actual refactor, otherwise it's actually gonna change the file that .env is looking for. So I'm just gonna say, let's call it .env old, and then refactor that. So the only thing that changed here is this file name. So now again, I can do the the env grep to show you what we have in there. We just have secret one defined. Nothing else has been defined. So now if I go ahead and run python main.py, you can see that I do not have values for these things. So even though the .env file is not present, the load uh, that, that load.env command doesn't give you an exception. So in production, it's gonna work just fine as long as your CI CD pipelines or your production environment defines those things in the session environment variables. Okay, and that's basically the .env. Now there is one more thing that I wanna tell you about, and that's basically that there are certain more advanced features, and certainly you should go and read the documentation. There's really not a whole lot going on with this library. But one of the things that it does do, it, it can actually do variable interpolation. So for example, if I define in my .env file this base URL, then I can actually define other environment variables that use base URL. And to do that, you have to use the dollar sign and the curly braces, and then you just specify the actual value. So if we take a look at our n file, and let me refactor that and rename it back to .env, so if we take a look at this, you'll see that my um, SWAPI base URL is this. And then for the films environment variable, I actually reference that variable. I, I reference this value over here and then just tag on slash films. And this is why when I run Python main.py, you can see that I have the base URL defined and then the Star Wars API films has that variable interpolated in there. So that's actually quite useful as well. And that's it for the .env file. And it's very, very handy and very simple to use. Thanks for watching.